I've played a lot of SimCity when I was younger and absolutely loved it, but there was one thing that I never understood. Disasters. Tornadoes, robot attacks, meteor showers, whatever, I never saw the point. Why spend hours and hours building the perfect city only to see it all fall apart again? I've spent some time thinking about why, and I think the problem is that, at least in SimCity, disasters have no long-term consequences for the simulation. It's not like new buildings in a more modern architectural style appear in the areas that were destroyed. It's not like little monuments appear in the areas that were hit hardest, and every year a group of inhabitants appears to remember their loved ones. No, as a player, all you do is try to rebuild what broke down, and then continue as if nothing happened. In a game about evolution, on the other hand, disasters do have long-term consequences. So again, I take inspiration from my hero Will Wright and include disasters. Out of all possible disasters, I have selected four that I believe have the clearest long-term consequences. So, for those of you new here, this is evolution simulation game The Sapling, my solo indie game project. It's a game where you can basically do two types of things. On the one hand, there are a number of scenarios tasking you to design an ecosystem that meets specific requirements. On the other, there is a sandbox where you can build your own algae, plants and animals, turn on random mutations and see how they evolve. Starting with the most important one, forest fires. If you have areas that are hot and dry, there will be dry thunderstorms. And in these areas, every now and then, a fire will start at random. Playtesting sessions showed that this hot and dry mechanic was not immediately obvious to most players, however, so I needed to communicate that better. Of course, I can do that with a tooltip, like I do with a few other game mechanics, but to me that feels... dirty. I want to show, not tell. My best shot is an extra overlay in the planet editor that shows the fire risk. If you make your world hotter and drier, you can see the risk increase. Because of its relatedness to terrain statistics, fire risk can depend on the season. So I also added a new UI element that shows up when you add seasons, where you can see the effects this season will have on the planet. I did of course also think about players who want more control. Also in the planet editor, we have a slider that controls the chance of fire and you can adjust in-game too. And you can also at any time start a fire yourself. For this I'm reusing the eraser circle, but now with a nice flamethrower sound effect. There's something strangely hypnotizing watching a fire jump from plant to plant. Fire only spreads to plants directly next to it, which has the interesting side effect of encouraging evolution of plants that spread their seeds a little further away. Another interaction with seeds I did put in on purpose. A seed type that actually requires fire to open. Just like you see in real life, in areas with a lot of wildfires, some plants will adapt to actually make use of it. Whereas other seeds burn and die, these seeds will emerge directly after a fire and be the first to colonize new territory. And there's also the opposite strategy, fire resistance. I've replaced the old bark toggle with four bark types and one of them is fire resistant. Of course, it requires that the leaves and other body parts are really high up. Disaster number two, if you have fires, the step to volcanoes is small. They don't need a lot of explanation actually. Volcanoes are hand placed in the planet editor and then also hand activated. They go through several stages, with the first one being a rumbling sound effect and a smoke particle system. The latter stages show the lava streams slowly flowing downwards, until in the last stage they reach any plants that might grow there, which will obviously catch fire. The third disaster are floods, or to be more precise, the option to manually increase and decrease ocean depth, like how you could already increase and decrease temperature to cause ice ages and global warming. This can be used to split a continent into multiple smaller islands, so you can see how two ecosystems slowly grow apart. Or bring two ecosystems together and see which species win out. And now the ocean level is a dynamic thing in the code, I could relatively easily link it to seasons too, so you can have something like seasonal tides. Or perhaps high water season and low water season are better terms. 
the newly added UI element in the planet editor to see seasonal effects on the planet also comes in handy here. I imagine areas that continuously switch between being an underwater area and a land area would create a huge pressure for the animals living there to be able to live in both. So I hypothesize that planets with seasons like this will see land animals faster than planets without, but I have yet to test that theory. The final disaster is really a combination of all kinds of features I built before. This disaster too is using the forest fire mechanics. It has dust, which is just a repurposed mist particle system. This dust is limiting the sunlight, which was already in the code for a scenario. I'm again reusing the circle, I'm reusing the screen shake you get when dropping large organisms, and I'm even reusing the pebbles particle effect you get when you remove organisms. I'm of course talking about meteorites. The only truly new thing here is actually the sound effect, which is a combination of three sounds. This one, this one, and this one. The result looks like this, and for me is super satisfying. Besides the forest fire, the dust cloud that follows will kill most algae and plants, except the ones that catch most sunlight. Some reviews of the sapling mention this is a game where you can have fun doing absolutely nothing. Which I understand is meant as a joke, but it's of course not something I like to read. I hope these four disasters to be activated at the player's will will solve that a bit. Okay, that's all I have for you guys this season. If you can't get enough, I actually have a tip for you, besides following the Sapling X account, which is another really similar game currently in development. It's called Planetary Life, it is also developed by a single person, it also has a YouTube channel with devlogs, it also has an X account, and it also implemented natural disasters. So if you watch the devlog still here, it's probably right up your alley. As for this game, the food and fire update will be released on the experimental branch on October 17. But I have to warn you guys, there are over 50 known bugs that I still have to work my way through. And then we're not even talking about the unknown ones. The previous update took about 2 months to get into a more or less stable state after it was functionally complete, so I guess it's safe to keep that as an estimate for this time as well. Once I reach that stage, the experimental branch will be removed again and everybody will be on the same version. Also a heads up, I'm getting signals from various sources that the game is on the cheap side again, so I will also use this moment for a small price increase. In other words, if you already know you want to buy the game, you might want to do it before then. After that I will focus on optimization again. We all know the game struggles to visualize the thousands of organisms players often want to simulate. I have a few ideas of things I want to try, but of course, success not guaranteed. After that, I will continue to polish the game to make it ready for another episode of Evolution Simulated. I'm thinking about having it take place on an archipelago to really showcase the new seed mechanics. And that concludes Season 3 of the Devlogs. On the one hand, I have to admit, after 2 months of non-stop video editing, I'm happy to return to coding. But on the other, I know that the enthusiastic lists of suggestions will slowly turn into slightly annoyed lists of things that are broken. But you know what? Bring them on. I'm ready.